Hi everyone, it's Mr Johnson here. Welcome to another one of my videos. Thank you very much as always for tuning in. Um, oh, I've just noticed actually this is quite a busy tie shirt combo, uh, but for the purposes of the video, we'll soldier on. Right, today um, it's a little bit of a sensitive one. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, internet safety and sexualized behavior that's um, started to come through. Now, there is so the, the warning label is this video is not designed to instill mass scale panic because um, the majority of what I'm about to say won't apply to you, but it's very important that you stay informed. Um, so there's nearly 750 children in our school, uh, there's 150 staff and there's a million of you and my ultimate responsibility is to keep everybody safe and it, it's a responsibility that I take very seriously. Um, this is my fifth headship and I've been ahead for a long time and this headship is not like any other headship. Uh, the world of 2023 um, is different for, for a school leader. Um, for you as parents, being a parent in 2023 is different to anything we've known before. Um, but also being a child in 2023 is, is a different world than when we were children. Um, I'm lucky because I get to work with children every day um, and I know um, how to listen to children because I'm fortunate enough to, to have learned the skill of being able to do that over the years. Um, and I get to enjoy the wonder and the magic that they bring. Um, but when I'm looking through their eyes um, and I'm seeing the world around us and the things that are cropping up and appearing through the children, um, it, it gives me worry. Um, you trust me and you trust my team every day uh, to keep your children safe. And that's why I'm talking to you today about this, because the, the world is changing rapidly and, it, and it's important that we change with it. So. The, there has been um, an increase in sexualized behavior manifesting um, in different ways through a very small number of our older children. Um, and I believe, it's my view, that it, it's because of the internet and social media and the access that they have to it and what's on it. When I was at school, it was a long time ago, um, there wasn't internet, there wasn't social media, and it felt that you could develop as a child at your own pace and into puberty, and then you could ask questions. Things weren't spoken about like they are today, in my experience, um, but it was definitely, it felt a more natural uh, way to, to grow. And I think that the best way we can do things in school, which is what I'm, I'm pushing, is that we just keep the children age appropriately informed about the world and um, develop as they grow up and developing um, so that they have the correct information at an appropriate level to them and, and their, of their development and also their age. Um, and they know what they don't know if you understand what i mean so they know to ask the right questions i mean when, when i was at school you if you were fortunate to have um, an older brother or sister or a friend that did you got to learn things that way but of course it was probably not uh, accurate um and, and it, things are just different now so the best way is for for us all to be informed okay now um in school, we have um, a system called Smoothwall. Uh, we've invested a lot of money in a new server, a new infrastructure. What happens is if a child um, goes onto a, the internet, they go into Google, for example, and they search for something and it, it, it'll be innocent, our um, Smoothwall will block it um, if, it, if it could be uh, a word that will give them access to a, a website that they shouldn't be going on and I will get an alert. So I'll know the child, which child it was, and I'll know what the website was. And then I can go in and have a look. And it just means I'm always live with what's going on in school every day. I get these alerts every day. 
And be on, to be honest, I get one, two or three a week. No, not many. At home, do you honestly know what they are accessing and who they're talking to? Ask yourself that question. Because if you don't, you really do need to. Um, and this applies at all, all ages. So what's happened is um, it's starting to, to um, come through. There's a small group of children that are displaying sexualized language and sexualized behaviors. And this is coming through from situations in the park, on WhatsApp, for example, TikTok. Um, it's rare in school. If it happens in school, we deal with it and you will be informed. The way we manage um, dealing with sexualized behavior um, is in a, the form of a traffic light system. Now do bob onto our website and have a look at our policy. I'll, I'll add the link to this and I'll send all this out on the app as well as on Facebook. The majority of behaviors we class as green, healthy, normal behaviors. So it's exploratory, it's age appropriate, there's no intent to cause harm, the children think it's humorous. Uh, our youngest children and, and children preschool have that a brilliant time where um, they can pretty much do what they want and, and they don't have to worry about socialised norms, what, what's normal behaviour. Um, you know, for example, they don't mind taking all the clothes off on the beach. <laughs> um, we, we would only worry about that once the children develop into more of a school age and, and if they're still not seeing how things Bit, certain behaviours can be appropriate or not in certain situations. So we would class things like that as, as a green behaviour. Asking questions um, on the back of maybe a PSHG lesson, our lessons are scenario based, age appropriate. So for instance, for our older children, we base our lessons on situations that they'll come across in the park and how to manage that. And all questions around that we would class as green. We then got onto amber, which is more concerning behaviours. So this is where it's perhaps not age appropriate. Um, for example, a child could be using sexualised language or not having sort of clear boundaries of space, you know, uh, personal space, making others feel uncomfortable. Usually it's one-off instance, low, low key instance, maybe they touch somebody on the bottom. Um, as a one-off, and, and we would we would talk to them about that, educate them in why that's not not appropriate. We then move on to the red behaviours, which we would class as as a harmful behaviour, and th and this is where more formal intervention would be put in place. So, for example, again, not appropriate um, sexual behaviours. There's usually an element of planning, secrecy. It could be targeted against somebody. Usually the, the child or young person wouldn't take responsibility for that behaviour. They would blame others or feel that the that it, it's it's why we're questioning it. Um, and incidents usually increasing frequency and usually escalate into into the severity of them as well. And again, straight away we we would um, involve you and we would work together. We must always work together. And by working together, we're protecting them um, as a team, aren't we? And that's what we do. So please have a look on our website. I, I've popped our policy on there. Um, I've also put a link that I found on the BBC uh, last night um, about this subject, which you might find interesting as well. So if you are concerned ever, always come straight to me or one of the team stay close and, and together we'll keep our children safe and informed and ultimately we want them to be able to manage uh, the world that they live in and together we can do that of course we can so that's all from me thank you very much uh, for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you soon any questions get in touch and um, come and catch me when i'm let to pick in um if you if you you know, have any questions directly about this. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.